Hey guys, this is uh, Dennis Tafe, and uh, I'm working on my pedal board. Uh, now it's just um, it's a pedal train Novo 24, so it's about 24 inches in length, and um, and that's fine for a small set up for me anyway uh, the minimum I really need to get the sounds I want um, but then I had the idea of adding another Novo 24 and bolting it together to make one big board about 48 inches in length and then it dawned on me that uh, you know if you're just playing a, a small you know coffee house gig or something you don't want to bring you know <laughs> a gigantic pedal board um, on the other hand uh, there are times that I do want the pedal board especially the second half would have things that interface to my uh, rack um, as well um, so that could come in very handy and at home I'd much rather have both as well uh, for recording and that kind of thing. Um, and the bolting, uh, I'll show you here in a second, uh, turned out really well. Uh, it was a real pain. I had to spend five dollars on a drill bit and then some bolts. <laughs> and, uh, man, that aircraft a little bit it's hard to go through especially with a crummy drill which I had uh, the other thing is to keep it from bowing you know from going like this instead of straight flat um, you really have to tighten those down that's kind of a, a con of doing something like that uh, but it works out great you know it gets your pedals off the floor that kind of thing. The other thing is, um, you know, I'd had the first Novo 24 for quite some time, and man, I couldn't believe how dusty the pedals get, you know, in the future I'm covering them with a, I don't know, a plastic liner or even a plastic tarp or something, you know, keep that dust off of there. So let me turn this around and I'll show you, uh, where I'm at on this, basically. Okay. And so here it is. Um, starting over here, this is half the pedal board, and it's pretty much done. I'll turn it on here in a second. And then right there, real closely, there are those bolts. I've got three of them here that bolt the two boards together. So this is the second board here. I'm not done with that one yet. And uh, see if we can back up, you can see the whole. I guess the whole board would be about, I don't know. Yeah, about that big. Let me turn on the light here. This camera is kind of strange. There we go. Okay, so there's half the board right here, and that's the minimum board. And I've got a time factor line six M five H nine boomerang, a smart clock, and then a Soulman a MIDI controller. Awesome. So that's the minimum setup. Goes to two amps. Okay, now. that right there and so that holds them both together and then this will hold another line 6 m5 an h9 a beat buddy accessory pedals and so okay now um, keep in mind the idea 
behind this uh, mega board where I connect the two Novo 24s is because really uh, for smaller gigs and things I can get by with half of it now here's the trick is having it fully functional on half the side and then being a simple way of connecting it to the other side and having everything work and what I discovered is that you really need three cables a MIDI cable and two audio cables so that's not too difficult at all uh, I don't know if I'm going to be too lazy to unbolt it you know and bolt it back on when I need to uh, we'll see but let's get into this a little more uh, first thing is here on this one uh, underneath here in fact I don't know if you can see this um, but I can uh, carry both here you know hold them both up there's half there's the other half it's pretty heavy uh, but I wanted this part uh, to work and this is the way I had it before uh, these two are on a separate board so don't worry about those so really starts here goes across and it comes out here all right and uh, now underneath I've got a couple things going on I can carry that I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, underneath here, I have a little box that's a quadra through. It uh, splits MIDI into four different lines. And then I have a Voodoo Labs Power Pedal Digital. And it supplies power to the Eventide, the Boomerang, the M5, and the H9. Uh, basically, all of the audio pedals but then beyond that right here this little I don't know if you can see that uh, here. this little silver thing down here underneath um, is 10 9 volt 100 amp milliamp outlets basically little isolated boxes kind of a cheapo and uh, that powers everything that's not audio in other words the Smart clock and this whole man, uh, whole man MIDI controller, and that way the audio signal's real clean. Now, right now, I'm using kind of cheapo cables, and they're kind of long, even. Uh, you can see them here, uh, right there, they are, so they're not. George L's or anything fancy like that with a you know right angle. I guess they kind of have a right angle right here. Um, you can see them here, right there, but only half. <laughs> They're half right angle. So, and uh, there's just two issues uh, that I run into this far is that when I unbolt this, um, one see you'll see that the MIDI cables uh, right here um, unfortunately there were standard MIDI cables and as a result this board this board this one and this one doesn't leave space um, for the H9 to fit on there fully right now it's kind of off at an angle it's on there temporarily um, notice um, the difference right here is a right angle MIDI cable and right here's a standard and obviously the difference is you lose a lot of space that way so once I change all these over to right angle MIDI cables then the H9 will fit perfectly there's one other issue and that is with the Soul Man editor here, Soul Man MIDI controller. It's connected to this little pedal 
right there, that one. And it's kind of clumsy. What I really don't like about it is this. Listen, that clicking. Well, I, I change patches quite often, and I don't want that coming through on recordings and things. And I much prefer this pedal. It does the same thing. It's just a two-button foot switch. But it's one of those Roland foot switches. It's actually a Behringer, but the Roland style foot switches, and uh, works a lot better. The problem is, it's about one inch or half an inch too big. Um, the only solution I can find is to either bring the Boomerang 3 over to hang over the edge, or have the Soul Man hang over by a little about that much um, not a big deal if we have the second one bolted you know the second pedal train bolted together but if not um, it, it just you know it hangs out a little bit all right now hold on just a second and I'll plug it in here uh, oh the other thing is I have to say uh, it's really nice to to be able to plug everything in with one plug is very nice. So hold on a second. Okay, so here we are, kind of lighting up here. And I'll turn up the light. Ah. There you go. So that's half of it there. The other half's not plugged in at all yet. Now, I have a little remote control here, and this is just silly. I saw this on the show. Ah, that's kind of cool. And it was a cheap thrill for 12 bucks on Amazon. And what it does is, let's see if I can turn that on. Okay. So there you go. Um, here's the little remote control. I keep it Velcro to the board, and all it does is it, as you can see, it has that. Um, lighting under the board. You can see it. Uh, my hair does all that kind of stuff. Different colors. And you can program it to to you know do all kinds of different color variations and stuff like that. It's kind of doofusy, really, when you think about it, because uh, your petals cover it up mostly. <laughs> So it's kind of silly, but it's fun, you know, what the heck, for 12 bucks, and it's just this kind of tape with like little LEDs on it. It's actually pretty cool. Helps you see the board a little bit better. Okay, um, let me turn that back on. Ugh. So here we go, we got the lights on, back on, and yeah, you can see the under under the board and from the sides and stuff you can see it better. Let's see if I, yeah, I turn it back off. I just keep it right here. It's just Velcroed on that little remote control. Right now I've seen some guys and somehow they get three pedals up there. I don't know how they do that. For me I just I just don't have the space. I don't want it so crammed, you know? Um, Obviously the pedals I use most are on the bottom here and then these go on top. Now eventually I've got these another boomerang and a sidecar and surprisingly uh, it works with this first one on this board right here. So I think I'm going to put those here and here on the second board and I, I, I can use either. I can use one or I can use two. Um, obviously two little better. Um, then I've got the crusty little beat buddy. Um, this turns on a rack looper on and off. And the problem is I got about four of those and I, I just don't see the space for that. You know, having foot pedals for each one. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Work in progress. There's uh, another pedal power digital. And when I got this board, some guy had put some a trip light 
power adapter on here and might as well leave it. Looks nice for us well. Uh, the only thing is here, wall wart. So I'll, I'll use a power adapter for that so it's more of a cable like this. Now, I guess here's the thing. Overall, um, I'm, I'm glad I did this because, uh, you know, before they were just all over the floor and you just don't realize how cables start to, <laughs> to mount up. Man, I had a mountain of cables. Basically, it looked like this before, you know. It just keeps adding up because you patch out different cables to try and that kind of stuff. And, and this is real nice too. I mean, if I hit one thing here, boom, you know, uh, it turns stuff on and off here. Bypass, if you watch that line, 6M5, when I hit the button, it turns it on and off right there. And turns the other stuff on and off. Yeah, MIDI controller, and you know, you program that with a computer, and that's real nice. Um, yeah, one change, one change I may make is right here, this, with this pedal right there. I just don't quite have the space there, so this will have to hang over a little bit. Uh, shouldn't be that big a deal. There we go. So anyway, that's the board. The other thing is uh, the order of the board. As you notice, I don't have a switcher. You know, it switches the order of the pedals. Um, you know, for, for me, that's just way, way, way too complicated. If something goes wrong, you know, you are so screwed uh, as far as finding a bad cable and that kind of thing. Here, it's actually pretty simple, and you can follow the, the pattern. Uh, I always thought that the Line 6 M5 was the first pedal, but it turns out, for whatever reason, I had the H9 first. So from the H9, I'm gonna go into the M5, from the M5 to the time factor, and then from the time factor into the time factor into the boomerang. But I might switch it, I don't know yet. I might go M5, H9, Time Factor, Boomerang. Uh, depends. Depends, because I already have a bunch of uh, presets I really like, the way they are. And I don't know if switching these two, you know, which one comes first, if that's going to affect the, the presets, make them sound better or worse. So that's the that's half the board. So that's done, and you know, I suppose if I can offer any advice is try to map this stuff ahead of time, of course. Um, but in the end, you always run into things that you didn't expect. Like the, for me, it was the MIDI cables. Uh, I didn't realize that, um, that I didn't have that much space on the board to begin with. The other thing is, um, you know. I use a combination of Velcro and dual lock, and for that, uh, I recommend just, uh, you know, <clears throat> the dual lock's better, really. Uh, but the Velcro works just as well sometimes. For example, this is Velcroed on, and I can't move that for anything. It's good. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, the other thing is, you know, it's, it's, it, in the end, I realized just from creating this uh, that's not that big a deal if you get it wrong. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm definitely going to have to experiment and, and see which order of pedals works best and that kind of thing. And that's the thing you can, you know, remember, you can always change it. The three main things um, that I discovered doing, doing the pedals is really you have three, for me anyway, um, I had three main components to deal with. First being the power. Okay, that's probably the most important, you know. Um, and don't, 
you know, do your research. Uh, don't just plug it in and say, ah, if this doesn't work, I'll try this other cable. Uh -uh. If you do that, you're going to blow the pedal. And some of these pedals are super expensive. And you're just going to blow them up. You don't want to do that. Study ahead of time if they're uh, center negative, center positive. Make sure you have the right voltage and enough amps. You know, now amps you can go above. You know the required amps. For example, if it's nine volts, one hundred milliamp, and you have a nine volt, five hundred milliamp, that'll work. But if you have, you know, a pedal uh, that requires nine volts, one hundred milliamps and you plug in a 12 volt into it, it's gone, it's history. You know, now some pedals, like the, oh, which one was it? It was the, I think the H9. Uh, as far as I understand, it'll work with a 9 volt or a 12 volt. Uh, I went ahead and used the 12 volt, and those uh, pedal power digitals can power two of them easily. So, the first line, is power okay that's the first thing to deal with get everything powered up second audio okay obviously the shorter the cable probably the better the sound um, but within reason you know within someone's budget but right now I don't have the money to spend you know on a you know professionally wired up board um, and really for what I'm doing, the kind of stuff I'm doing, um, so far as I haven't needed it. I haven't had a cable go bad here. You know, um, so I'm just using kind of cheap old cable. It's not that they're cheap, but it's that they're long, longer. And they should, you know, they should probably be about, oh, oh I don't know, you know, a foot long. And instead, they're, <laughs> they're like three feet long, so. I have to wind them up and use cable ties and that kind of thing under the board, you know. But it, it comes out pretty clean, and it's a lot better than a spaghetti, you know, of cables. Um, so that that's the second part is the audio, and for audio you want to make sure you get the chain right, you know, what pedal goes into what, and in what order do you want it, and that kind of thing, um, and. Also, you know, from what pedal is it going to output to your amps and that kind of thing. Okay, thirdly, the third thing, the third line, if you like, for me, is MIDI. Um, you know, oh, and for me it was uh, which, who, which was going to be the master controller. Is it going to be the smart clock? The smart clock sends out um, MIDI... I'll show you. Sends out uh, MIDI. Like here's preset one. That's the tempo, 120. My next tempo, pre preset two, 154. Preset three, 88. And so on. It's a lot. Um, you can also, you know, tap in the tempo. But uh, with these smart clocks, it's really nice to have that preset. Um, Cause when I tap in the tempo, you know, I'm sitting there tapping the, the pedal way too many times. Um, and I usually, you know, it's never accurate for me anyway. I'm just not, I guess, very good at that kind of timing. Uh, I get pretty close. Like on 120, I sometimes get 119. Like I'm thinking this way, I have a preset, boom, 120. And, and every pedal, including the phrase sampler, the boomerang, the Eventide, the M5, the H9, all receive that tempo. And, and all the effects and things are set to that tempo. Now beyond that, I also have the Soul Man MIDI controller. All right, and you'll see here, uh, basically, this is my presets here. And if I click this button here, Yeah, if I click that button here, you'll see it goes through uh, 
another four presets, right? And then another four, another four. And so when I click these, it sends out the MIDI message to all the pedals, you know, to change to the correct setting, whatever that is. And that was the hard part for me, is figuring out, okay, well, which is gonna be the master, right? Because this, this controls the tempo, fine. This does not control the tempo, the Soul Man. But the Soul Man does send out which preset to use on each pedal. And I figured out a way that basically I go from the out, one of the, and the Soul Man, the Soul Man has two MIDI outs, which is nice. Uh, I remember when I was talking about interfacing to the other board, I used that. But anyway, here's a right angle MIDI um, out, and it goes to the MIDI in of the smart clock. And then out of the smart clock to the quadra through under the board, which gives me four, it's kind of a splitter, it gives me four, four MIDI lines that I run to each pedal. And that way it combines the preset and the tempo coming out of the pedal into the MIDI controller. And so that works really great. So with one click, you know, uh, the, the preset's already set up here. You know, I set it to, in fact, if, if you watch, I'll click this to the next one. I don't know, I forget what it is. I think it's like 130 or something, 135. And, and watch what happens on the Eventide. Try that again, that works out very good. Okay, watch what happens on the other time. I'm gonna click it again to preset one. You see how it's changing that? There we go. Very nice. And now, if I click uh, time factor, see how it's switching that? And that's from switching the Soul Man. So that works really great. It took a while to figure out. So those three things, power, audio, and then MIDI, for me are the things to set up. And I guess the next part's gonna be um, setting up. I have another M5, another H9. I have a Boomerang 3 and Sidecar. And that's gonna go on the second board over here. Because um, usually on a small gig, you know, I only take the little, the little boomerang on the board here. But here I have two more. Uh, of course, it would have been nicer to, you know, have the three boomerang pedals right in a row and things like that, and the two H lines, you know, right next together and stuff. That's fine, but usability-wise, it's not. You know, because then you can throw the using half the board, you know, and bolting it and taking half the board to a, to a small gig, you know, um, out the window. So, so it's not going to look quite as uniform, you know, as the the pro boards and so on. But it works for me anyway. Um, so that's it. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, what else can I tell you about it? Yeah, if you don't tighten the, the bolts, it bows, you know, very easily. Um, and it's a, when you connect both together, it's a big board. Kind of heavy-ish, too. Uh, other than that, really, that's, a, that's about it, you know. And those pedal power digitals are just fantastic. Um, Power-wise, just super clean. Um, Sound-wise. Um, the other thing is, um, with the second board, the nice thing will be I'll have space for extra pedals to try. For example, I have a Boss DD500 to try. Um, um, notice I don't have any expression pedals yet and things like that, you know, to add. And chances are I'll probably run out of room again, you know. Uh, and in fact, if that does happen, Oh, God, that's heavy. That is heavy. But 
here. Um, I don't even see that. But it's a Boomer A3 in a sidecar. And it's actually made on a little pedal board that I made here. And uh, if I really want to, I can just hang this off the side. Uh, I'll show you. Off the side, so I make kind of a kind of a you know a hexagon shape, kind of you know the big pedal board, and then off to the side too. So it's really a work in progress. Um, I think it'll work out very nicely. And yeah, I wouldn't want to lug around this size of a board everywhere. But I could handle one. Yeah, that's that's not too big really. You know, in a coffee house. And I played coffee houses before. And, uh, yeah, I once brought my whole rack set up to a, a coffee house gig. And it was two, um, eight space rack, racks. And then I had amps. And then I had a pedal board. I mean, it was gigantic. And believe it or not, they stuck me out on the porch. And people were listening from inside. It was very, it was very ridiculous. So I learned my lesson. So I won't do that again. Uh, but this size board, you know, is fairly small. Easy enough to operate. You know, and at this point, it's basically just uh, plugging a cable. You know, I use two amps to, for stereo. So... Just plugging in a cable into each amp and then uh, plugging the guitar into the pedal board. It's not too bad. You know, before, man, I used to have to connect everything at every gig. It was terrible. Effects loops and stuff. It got crazy. And the worst part is then when I had, was done with the gig, I had to uh, undo everything. And what I would end up with is a bin. And I'd throw all the cables in there come home with a big spaghetti here you go kind of like this stuff right spaghetti of cables didn't know what was going to what so I'm done with that um, so this works out pretty well um, and the sound is just fantastic uh, now um, uh, eventually, what I'd like to do, once I really figure it out and hone it down, I will probably get smaller cables, you know, like the George L. Kid or something like George L. Cables. Uh, and the other thing is, they also have little output jacks that you can mount to the board. Um, and I very much like that. So, whereas everything stays plugged in, and when I unbolt, you know, one of the boards, uh, I can just unplug the three cables very easily from there. You know, because they're already wired up. Alright, but that's ahead. We'll see. First, we'll see what's going on here and trying to hone this down. So, first thing I need, I see, are, are some more uh, right end mini cables. And then after that, yeah, you gotta yeah, buy the. Cables. You know, I, I tried a uh, Line 6 Helix um, recently, and um, basically they do all this for you. I mean, it's built into the board, basically. You know, um, and if it didn't take so long to tweak to get a, a good sound, you know, and uh, and for the amps that I have that I love. I would definitely go with that because this is this is tough. It's tough. But once you get it set up, it's really nice. Um, yeah. So we'll see how this goes. And I'm telling you ahead of time, unless you're really great with I don't know woodworking or, or metal work or what have you, you know, handy man, which I am not. I'm all thumbs. It took me, I think, four hours to get the two ports connected. Okay, so I'm not 
very handy. But my thought is, man, I'll never pay that much for a, a pedal train, you know. But I'm telling you, um, in the end, it's worth it because I have tried the do-it-yourself route, and it wasn't pretty. It was horrible, seriously. Getting the measurements, getting the wood, and cutting it, and then you discover, wait a minute, this thing weighs a ton. You know, you don't want to carry that around. Uh, it's bad enough, especially if we had two of them like this. Um, so the aircraft aluminum, it does, the fact that they're lightweight really does make a difference. It's worth it. You know, I'm not sure about the soft bag you get to carry it around. I haven't really done that. You would assume a case would be better. Okay, that's about it. So, see you next time, and uh, hope this helps you out. If you're building a pedal board or been thinking about one, you know, or connecting two together, which is really nice real estate wise, because then you really have space for your pedals. Um, I guess one last thing is. I, I don't know about you, but I even have trouble, you know, hitting these switches over over the first set of pedals. So think about that when you're putting down pedals. You know, if you put a pedal that you use all the time way back here, you know, you're going to have a really hard time hitting that pedal and not hitting the other pedals, you know, by accident. Alrighty. See you next time. Thanks. Bye.